we are still celebrating the Easter season. We know that Easter is an important feast in the life of the church because the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ is the foundation of our Christian faith. The reason why we are called Christians. So that is why from Easter Sunday to the second Sunday of Easter is a long period of celebration till second Sunday of Easter. And today is what the church calls the Divine Mercy Sunday. Divine Mercy Sunday is a day we reflect on God's mercy and the need for us to have forgiveness of our sins. The scripture tells us, if you, O Lord, should mark our iniquities, Lord, who will survive? If God begins to count our sins, I don't think that any, any of us will survive. But some of us may be wondering today, why celebrating divine mercy? All about the history of our salvation is about the mercy of God. How merciful God has been to us. Divine Mercy Sunday became possible through the revelation received by St. Faustina from Jesus Christ emphasizing God's mercy for us as far as we are still under human nature, the tendency to go against the commandment of God is always there. Therefore, we need God's mercy whenever we deviate from the commandment of God. Today is the last Sunday of the week-long celebration of the foundation of our Christian faith. The responsorial psalm of today captures our mood of celebration, taken from Psalm 118. We repeatedly say in the psalm of today, his mercy, his love endures forever, which means the mercy of God, his love is everlasting, it does not end. From Abraham to David, the mercy of God has lasted forever. From David to deportation to Babylon, and from deportation to Jesus Christ, who came to show us God's mercy. So Jesus is an embodiment of God's mercy. The gospel tells us that God so loved the world, he gave his only son. So Jesus Christ is the manifestation of God's mercy because he came and died for us on the cross of Calvary because of our sins. What is divine mercy, if we may ask? Divine mercy means God forgives us our sins. He refrains from punishment due for our sins because of his love for us. God's mercy is revealed when Jesus Christ came into the world. He came, suffered, died, and resurrected, and resurrected for our redem redemption. In the Gospel of today, Jesus transmitted the power of his mission to his disciples. He said, as my father sent me, so I am sending you. And that was the transmission of the power and the authority of Jesus Christ unto his disciples. He transferred this authority and power when he met them at the upper room. These words of Jesus Christ reveals God's mercy in an unbroken chain from his disciples to us, we present Christians. 
Jesus Christ empowered his disciples with the Holy Spirit. He not only transmitted the power and the authority, but also he empowered them with the Holy Spirit. He gave them authority to forgive sin. And he said, whose sins you forgive, they are forgiving them. And whose sins you retain, they are retained. By these words of Jesus Christ, he instituted the sacrament of reconciliation, a sacrament of divine mercy and compassion of God. God's mercy is manifested in the sacrament of reconciliation. The power to forgive sin and retain sin is given to the church of Christ as a continuation of this divine mercy. The Catechism of the Catholic Church says, the whole power of the sacrament of reconciliation consists in restoring us to God's grace and joining us with him in an intimate, intimate friendship. Just like Pope John Paul II will put it, he says that the divine mercy is a bridge, the bridge we cross to meet God the Father. Whenever we sin and we want to come back to God, we cross through the, the, the bridge of divine mercy. If Jesus could commission the church to baptize in his name, if he could ask his disciples to celebrate the Eucharist as the memory of his death, if Jesus could ask us to anoint and heal the sick, then God is kind enough to give us his mercy in the sacrament of reconciliation. We receive, when we receive the sacrament of reconciliation with a contract heart and good religious disposition, we restore our intimacy with God. We receive peace of mind. We also receive the serenity of conscience and strong spiritual consolation. With my personal experience, there is a kind of peace you have when you leave the confessional, peace of mind. And that is what the sacrament of reconciliation does in our hearts. John Paul II, in his homily at the Shrine of Divine Mercy in Laguiniki on June 7, 1997, he said, Our hearts need divine mercy. That love of God, which is benevolent, which is compassionate, which raises one above his or her weaknesses to the infinite highs of the holiness of God. Divine mercy raises up to holiness. My dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, the message of divine mercy is very dear to our hearts because of our human limitations. Jesus, asking us to trust him. If you look at the picture of the divine mercy, you see Jesus Christ beckoning on each and every one of us to trust him. And that's why you see on that holy picture, it is written, Jesus, I trust in you. So Jesus is asking us today to trust him, not to be afraid to approach him for mercy, we should not be afraid to approach Jesus Christ in the sacrament of reconciliation. It is the sacrament that restores our peace, that restores our intimacy and relationship with God. Let us always ask for God's mercy whenever we go contrary to the commandment of God. Just like the responsorial son of today, 
the mercy of God endures forever. And the mercy of God will always overwhelm our sins.